I think it will matter that that year over year number ticks down. I mean, I think that's the first thing that markets will look to is has do the numbers suggest that inflation has peaked and, and at least it's not moving higher. And, and that is our forecast, both with respect to the month of April. We, we, we're a little bit higher than the consensus. Um, we're looking for a month over month gain of three tenths, which would only take that year over year to 8.2. But the bottom line is going forward, we do see that year over year number coming down. So again, optically, it, you may have some, some confirmation or certainly evidence to suggest the, the worst is behind us. So check that box. But, you know, we do have to focus on these month over month changes. That's going to be very important. And if you strip out food and energy, which I'm only stripping out because of the volatility. And this month, you will see energy prices come off for the for the for the month of May, um, helping to hold that headline down. If you strip that volatile, those volatile components out. I don't think the numbers are going to be all that great. We're looking for a half a percent increase. It's a little better than the pace we've been seeing, yeah. but way too high on a sustainable basis. Well, you know, used cars have been such a huge part of this. And whatever you think about the makeup of the CPI data, we can argue that at some other point. But the Mannheim Auto Index, which is kind of the benchmark, Mannheim's a huge uh, auto auction mm -hmm. in, in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, that they use as kind of a benchmark, has actually rolled over. Used car prices yes. are starting to roll over pretty good. I mean, if you're buying a car, it's good news. So headline inflation may actually come down. But does that mean it really is getting better? Well, and that's what we were saying. If you strip out some of the volatile, you know, the volatile components like food and energy. And again, energy has been a big part of the increase, um, higher inflation story. And at least for this month has, has abated. The numbers are not are, are not that encouraging. Now, you mentioned used car prices, which had which previously, you know, last year had put a lot of upward pressure on the core rate of inflation. They they came off sharply last month. We expect they'll be off a bit uh, further um, again uh, now in April. I'm sorry, I misspoke the month before. These are April numbers, but but you know, used car prices. You mentioned if you want to go buy a car, we think the used. Sorry, we think the new car price numbers this month are going to be very firm. We've got them rising yeah. over a percentage point. And the other area of, of um, you know, if you look more broadly away from the goods categories, but some service prices, whether we're talking about rent and and housing, you know, more broadly, or whether we're talking about hotels and airfares, we see a lot of firmness there. Again, if you're running a half a percent a year over year a month, that is, you know, that's what that's a six percent annualized increase that you, yeah. you can't, you know, for the Fed, that that's not ultimately going to be what they're wanting to see. Is there anything quickly, Michelle, anything in the numbers today that could change Fed thinking and change the Fed's trajectory on interest rates? Not this month, because I mean, I think they've been very clear signaling 50 basis point increases back to back in June or July are the base case. If optically the numbers suggest, hey, maybe we have seen the peak, I think they'll yeah. feel comfortable enough to stick with that.